Diagnosing a complex tethered spinal cord is mainly done by an imaging study, almost always an MRI. Sometimes they're diagnosed even before the baby's born. You can see these on fetal ultrasound, you can see them on fetal MRI, and when the baby's born, there will often be markings or abnormal appearances to the back that tip you off that there's a tethered spinal cord inside. The obvious ones include the ones with lumps on the back, where there's actually a lump of fat under the skin that then is attached to the fat that's attached to the spinal cord. Those are also called lipomyelomeningocele. There can be other, what's been called stigmata or markings of tethered spinal cord, such as abnormal vascular markings on the back, deep dimples, abnormal areas of skin. So typically there are some clues on physical diagnosis. Ultimately, you get an MRI of the spine to see what the anatomy is and sort out what type of tethered spinal cord this is. And you go from there to trying to make a good decision what's best for that particular child in terms of operating or holding off for a while and following them closely. After a tethered spinal cord is diagnosed, one has to sit down with the parents and look at the pros and cons of whether to do surgery or not. If the risk of surgery and the surgeon's judgment is actually greater than the risk of not doing surgery, especially in a child that has completely normal function, in that situation, then we would hold off. But if we think that the surgery can be done safely with relatively low risk and the cord can be successfully untethered and the lipoma mostly removed, then we typically recommend operating on the child to release the cord from its attachment. There's another population of these children in the acquired category, the ones that have had surgery before, those are older children, that have had either a spinal cord lipoma that's been operated on, or a myelomeningocele, open spina bifida, that was repaired at birth. We follow those children closely throughout the course of their growing up, and we watch for the signs of symptomatic tethered spinal cord, including progressive curvature of the spine, a change in lower extremity motor function, orthopedic changes in the feet, new problems with bladder or sphincter function, back pain. So we follow that group of children usually on an annual basis unless there's something going on just to make sure that they're growing without developing any new symptoms. And then any new symptoms would trigger a need for surgery.